Hi, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I would like to share you a very interesting and a very important uh, principle um, about designing a flexible and maintainable reactor code uh, that is interface mindset. So basically, it's just a mindset change, but it's very important principle uh, when you applying when you designing your application. It helps to uh, decouple the producer and the consumer of your uh, data. That's a very powerful way to enforce the single responsibility principle, actually. So uh, let's get started. Um, the, as the title suggested, it, the interface mindset with Context API uh, will help you to build the flexible and maintainable React components. So if you have uh, only a few components, it might not be very helpful. But if you're build, be, you're, if you are building a larger uh, application with like a hundred, maybe thousand of components, that will help quite a lot. It can simplify the responsibility of each components and how they can easily being um, co being like composed together to form the uh, the whole uh, application. So let's talk about the regular context API first. Um, context API you may have already used it in your application, maybe you use it as a data sharing mechanism, like you put some data in the root level, and then uh, down the tree you can access that data, and uh, maybe you can expose um, some interface, like you know the get setter of that particular data, and then you can share these. Um, so so you can down the tree you can sh you can access this interface, and basically using the API provided by that uh, context and uh, manipulate the data inside it. That is a very typical scenario to use context API to share data. But here, uh, we want to achieve more by using the context as an interface container. According to React's uh, document, context that parent component make, uh, make some information available to any component in the tree below it, no matter how deep, without passing it explicitly through props. So that's a great way to share the data in the tree. And uh, the user is relatively simple. So you, in one place, you click the contacts, uh, and probably you will define the shape of the contacts, and then uh, you expose that variable as a module variable or like export it. And then in the root level, you would uh, use that context or provider, and the value will be the context value. So you, it can be it can be a static data, or you can also pass in any value like a function that can change the data. And that way, on the uh, leaf node, it can change the parent value and trigger the rerun their stuff. So it's a very standard way to do it. And once you have this provider defined, and down the tree, you can use contacts and get that value out of the contacts. I have already created a cheat sheet about uh, React hooks, the, the typical hooks. I will put a link in the description below. Feel free to download it. It's roughly a 20 page uh, PDF. You can download it. You can use that as a reference. So what is the interface mindset? So essentially that means you think, so whenever you define a, um, a props to a component, especially for uh, for larger ones or like for complicated, for complex to one, you need to think beyond the concurrent uh, props. Uh, instead, you should define an interface and then pass in uh, different implementation of that interface. Just like uh, if you are familiar with the Spring framework in the backend, it's like you define only the interface or like a, what's a protocol, what's a protocol of uh, what you are requesting in a component. And it's not a concurrent object, it's just the interface or like a shape of that object. It could be anything that fit to that uh, protocol or interface. And that way you can, you, you kind of split the implementation details and uh, the uh, protocol or interface. So the benefit of that approach is you can pass in different instances of that interface freely. So for example, if the um, concurrent implementation is difficult to construct, like you don't want to pass in an email address, you don't want to pass in an email sender instance or like a database 
the connection instance. Instead, you just pass in the interface. In either the automation test or unit test, you can very easily to construct a uh, interface. Oh, sorry, you can easily construct an object that implements this interface without actually doing any real work, like sending network request or connecting to a database. Um, so that way you can decouple your component to its dependencies. And that's a call of, you know, inverse of control or um, dependency injection. So if you are a subscriber of this channel, you, you probably have already been very familiar with this example. Um, so essentially it's a payment, sorry, it's a, it's a um, checkout page. Um, so it's a shopping cart kind of thing. And this is a checkout, this is a payment uh, page. You can, um, so because the application works in many different countries, like uh, in, uh, you know, Japan, uh, in, uh, I think it's whole, um, in Denmark and uh, Australia. So different country has different uh, algorithm for the rounding up. Like in Japan, it's like a, you need to round there to the nearest hand end. And in uh, uh, Denmark, you need to round up to the uh, nearest tens. And in Australia, you round up to the nearest integer. And for the payment component itself, you want it to be as generic as possible, right? Because the content, like the checkbox logic, the check logic, uh, agreed to donation, um, the display logic and the title are all the same, exactly the same for all the countries. So you want to keep that uh, similar, you want to keep that common logic into one place. But on the other hand, you want to you want to pass in the changing part um, from something else. That is a great example to using interface in this case. I just draw some boxes here. So this component is a payment component. It has some other, you know, sub component and uh, um, it does something else. We can define a interface. It's called a payment strategy or something like that. It's an interface. Uh, and uh, it doesn't do anything yet, but it has to <coughs> and there will be some concurrent object or classes that doing the real work like this one is probably Australian roundup logic It will run up to the nearest integer and uh, this one is a Japan strategy This one is Denmark strategy or if you ex the business expanding to other countries You probably will have a lot of other implementation of this interface for these concurrent um, classes, they are all in the same shape. And uh, in TypeScript, for example, you can use the interface to define actually an interface, like a, um, interface payment strategy, and you can define some method inside it. If you are familiar with object-oriented programming, you can define as many uh, interfaces as you want, and then you can implement these interface, different interfaces in a class. That is actually the I in the solid principles, but that is another story. So enough for the theory, let's jump into the implementation details. So how can we like merge these two concepts together, like uh, interface-oriented programming or interface-oriented mindset with the React Context API? So it's actually pretty simple. So you define interface just like you would do in any other uh, OOP languages like uh, in C Sharp or Java. In here, the signature need to be very clear. So in in the, in the interface definition, you need to clearly define the signature of the method inside it. And uh, for a concurrent implementation, for example, in here, the Australian strategy implements the payment strategy and for the get currency sign it will return the dollar sign for the roundup it has its own logic and for um, Japan it will it will be a new class Japanese strategy or Japan strategy and the get current currency sign will be the Japanese yuan and the roundup will be um, the nearest hundred so that way you will have a bunch of classes that implementing the same interface. Um, 
and in a payment where well, that's a usage um, in a <coughs> in the props instead of passing any concurrent information you just pass in the interface itself so that way when you call strategy dot run up it will dynamically change uh, to whatever you passed in so this is the one way to do that so to here we don't we we don't have the concept of context yet so you still need to pass in the strategy object from the outside world as a parameter to this payment component and uh, with direct context api we can easily define a uh, context or correctly context instance with this type and there is only member of this con uh, context is it has a strategy uh, member which is payment strategy type which will be this interface right and then in the payment strategy context we create this context object and then expose it so in uh, application level we'll import this context and then we use this um, context provider and the value will be the strategy so this strategy can be a dynamic strategy we can based on the country the use based on the country the user is logged in it could be either australian strategy or japan strategy or denmark strategy or whatever strategy and then we can dynamically switch that strategy here by passing a different instance of a strategy and uh, this is the, all about the context setup and it's outside of the, uh, the component so the payment component has not ha has zero knowledge about which strategy it's, it's using because it's kind of in the context it's defining the context outside the world and that's actually the, the most beautiful part of this pattern now the payment component is much more simpler in a um, props list it has it didn't it doesn't have anything particularly about the strategy but inside it it can use contacts the big payment strategy contacts get that strategy out of that context and then use it that way you completely decouple the payment and the contacts so you can also define a payment strategy contacts a default value so that way they will not throw exceptions if you don't use the component inside any uh, contacts for example you want to use that stat along payment component um, you can still fall back to the default value so remember we have these different um, payment section uh, different logic for the same payment section uh, in different countries it will work perfectly so what is the benefit of having the interface oriented design with direct contacts api so first of all is it increased the flexibility that means your payment component can focusing on the styling, the interaction, um, and the, the interface will, on the other hand, focusing on the algorithm, the calculation, the computation. And that way, we, we kind of split the logic and the look and feel part of the component. And that means it's, it's much more easier to maintain um, because you can test them separately. And in most cases, the strategy can be tested separately. And the benefit is it's pure calculation it doesn't involve any uh, react it's purely uh, javascript or typescript and that way we can compose different classes and correct classes and uh, and test all the uh, behavior of classes on the other hand the react component will be more focusing or will <coughs> we're focusing more on the um, the title the interactions like the click the button tick the checkbox click the button cancel all these kind of interactions and yeah that's pretty much about this video i hope you enjoyed please comment below if you, if you have any questions um, and uh, try to apply this interface mindset into your application and let me know if it's working or not as always don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give it a like if you find it useful and i will see you in the next video